first know and then B put out the information that we all need to stay calm. We need to support the military and law enforcement in keeping the peace and we need to start educating ourselves as to what's really going on. And this is where staying calm, why it's so important, is because in a state of anxiety or fear, your creative brain, your capacity to be intuitive and creative and problem solve goes down in a state of anxiety and fear. So it's really important to practice visualizing if there is some chaos in <coughs> and around you, how to go to a place of calmness and inner calmness and connect with your source to get answers to issues that are immediate. Okay, um, now I would like to go over some instructions that I have for people that uh, if you take this advice, um, it will help your life, the life of your family, the life of your friends, and the life of your communities during this transition. Uh, the first suggestion that I have is, on a regular basis, go shopping, keep your house full of food, know that there will be a period of time where you may not be able to go to the grocery store, you may not be able to go to the gas station, and you need to depend on yourself to take care of yourself, but also know that there's going to be people out there that are going to need help. So if you have some extra groceries, you're going to be able to work with the other people in, a commu in the community to help distribute resources to get people through this time. Have efforts been put into effect to guarantee that we'll have enough food and enough water, enough shelter, enough heat to get through this process? Yes. But not relying on those resources makes it easier for the transition to take effect. It makes it so the transition is smoother. So if you can go shopping every two to three days, stock up, keep your shelves full, realize that there may be a time in the future, in the next month or so, where these things are going to come in handy, you'll be good. If, you know, this is all disinformation garbage, you'll use those groceries eventually, and it's no big deal. So these are, you know, crazy steps that I'm asking you to take. Uh, another thing that is a good idea is to keep your vehicles full of fuel. Don't let them get below three quarters of a tank. Um, if you need the fuel, you'll have it. If you need to travel, if there is any unrest or any reason that you need to travel, you'll be able to do it because you have plenty of resources. Uh, another suggestion is to keep a fair amount of cash on hand, as much as you can afford. Um, cash in the bank, money in the bank, is not going to help you. Your debit card, your credit card, they're not going to work. I, I'm going to be flat out honest with you, the banking system will shut down. More than likely, cash will still be accepted for resources, for food, for gasoline. And those supplies will be there and be available for purchase for some period of time after changes start to affect. The most important thing that people can do is relax. When these changes start to happen, you knew about it ahead of time. You're prepared, you're ready to undertake these changes, and you know that you can spread the word even though people are, you know, getting ready to freak out and run in the streets, you can tell them, hey, no, I knew all about this. This is the way it's going down. I've gotten good information. If you want to check it out, here's some well, internet then, links. Yeah. Here's some good information. Get started with this. Very quickly after that, the television, the internet, the ways that we use to get information are going to take over and start the education process. Well, and a good way to help people relax is to help them get out of their head. And a lot of times we can get caught up in analyzing things. In this, you know, as things start to happen, you can analyze, analyze, analyze. And you want to stay present in the moment rather than caught up in your head. And the way to do that is to get into your body. Um, a couple of quick ways to do that. Have a fire. Have people out. Have some music playing in the background. 
talk about it. Keep, keep like almost like you know that movie The Burbs where they're like they're out of their houses, they're out interacting with each other and they're supporting each other. They have you know like a block party. Block party. That's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah. And have some music going on in the background. Get change of state. Get up. Walk around. Be out in nature. Um, have a fire and you know talk. What have you heard? Oh, I've heard this. And be invitational. Um, be inclusive. And that's a good way for for the stress level of everyone to go down. And and it makes it so that you're not alone. Right. Um, another thing that people need to be aware of is just like during 9/11. Uh, the communication system may quickly be overwhelmed. Um, just like on 9-11, when everybody got on their cell phones at once and the cell network shut down, understand that that is a possibility of happening. Uh, the Internet is going to be a very good source of giving people the ability to continue to communicate uh, beyond the capacities of the telephones and cell phones. So keep that in mind. Also, another very good thing that people need to understand is there's some old school ways of talking to people. Mm -hmm. If you have CBs, ham radios, you are going to be a nucleus of communication mm -hmm. in the first couple of days. So be prepared mm -hmm. to get information out to, you know, Essentially all over the world. Yeah. To be, you know, the center of information if you have those abilities. Uh, you know, it's, it's just going to be a fact. So those are the ways, simple, easy, to make the best time of the transition. And to make it as easy as possible and thereby making the transition as quick as possible. And that's why I said get creative, because if you can almost play a game with your own state of consciousness and go, okay, this could be scary, but instead I'm going to look at this as an adventure and get creative. Well, how do I get through this? Um, as moms, we're, we're good at resources. Um, you know, we have to heat up the food or keep it hot or, you know, uh, really good ideas. If you boil water, put it in a hot water bottle, and you can heat food that way or keep it warm that way. Um, just being creative and, and, and thinking like where there's a will, there's a way. And, and being rooted in that knowing so that you're calm enough to problem solve. And to take that one step further, um, people that are informed and ready for this transition, get out. Talk to your friends, talk to your family, get out of the house, go talk to your neighbors, make sure they're okay. Make sure that your communities are maximizing their resources during this time. Um, stores, restaurants, uh, hotels, anything that can help people stay safe stay secure, stay fed, stay warm or comfortable during this time is going to make it easy. What you're going to find out is really humanity is going to take over in this. And everybody that was interested in profit, profit, profit is going to see this as an opportunity to transition into taking care of their fellow human beings. We are going to be the best prepared. There are going to be people that shopping day was the day after the transition. They've got no food in the cupboards. They are scared. Their kids are upset. They've heard from their families, and their families are freaking out. You need to take those people in and help them and reassure them and say, you know, we've known about this for a long time, actually. It just hasn't been popular opinion. But this is the way to deal with it. Here's a little food. Here's, you know, here's a bedroom. Here's a place to lay down. Here's a means of transportation. If you've got to go pick up kids or move family temporarily, give them what they need to feel better. And this transition will be as easy as possible. Now, I want to stress to everybody that this, this video it's going to get attacked. 
there is going to be a level of disinfo that we haven't seen before. And it's going to be huge. Already, the resources that have been set against me have been seemingly unbelievable. More than I ever thought possible or anybody would ever, you know, take the time to go after me. But I have people that daily make comments on my YouTube to scare people into not believing what I'm saying. Drake has come under heavy, heavy attack. The people that profit from fear are going to work like crazy to set people back into a place of fear. We need to make them unsuccessful. Even if you are afraid, even if there is some level of fear coming about in your mind right now, you need to find the courage to get past the disinfo, to not listen to the white noise information, and understand that this is going to be the case. It's not hard to determine that the people that are in charge right now want this information not to get out. They don't want good preparations. They don't want people to believe that change is necessary. They want people to be afraid. And that's the way it's going to be. The presidency is going to be attacked. His birth certificate, NDAA, uh, Obamacare, you know, New World Order, the end of days, revelations, it's all going to be used. And the weight of the dark cabal will show its full face during this time. That's okay. Because if there's any last bits of information that hide the truth, they're going to be brought out and they're going to be determined and they're going to be undermined. And so I very much want people to understand that I'm okay. I'm putting myself on point. I'm taking the lead. And I understand that there's going to be fire from all angles that I'm going to have to put up with because of this information. I'm going to be discredited. This, I'm going to be called disinfo. I'm going to be said, oh no, not potential. This is an inevitable reaction. So I want everybody else that is supporting this movement. I want everybody that supported the uh, dollar donation causes that couldn't understand why a dollar was so important back then. But it plugged everybody in to a level of awareness and a level of consciousness and they invested something into the future. Well, that consciousness has elevated. And now, today, May 5th, World Liberation Today, later tonight, everybody's going to take that up to here. We're all going to work together tonight. We're going to go outside. We're going to look at that super moon as it, the moon passes as close to the planet as it gets. And we're going to be in awe of the fact that all of this synchronicity is happening. And then we're going to go in to our homes. We're going to find a comfortable place. We're going to lay down and we are going to see the future in our minds. We're going to see the future of what we want it to be. And we're going to manifest those changes because we as human beings, and I've said this time and time again, are infinitely capable. We've been led to believe that we're only capable of this much. We're going to find out that we're capable of this much. And then we're going to find out that we're capable of a whole lot more. Infinitely. Infinitely. But we're going to work together tonight to change the world. Steps are being put into place. Actions are determined and going to be taken in the next month. How those actions turn out are dependent 